Okay, cool. Welcome back to Behind Closed Doors. Today is June 10th. We have D back on today. Uh, a lot has happened since the last time we had D on, uh, including Taylor moving across country to Texas because uh, word has it he hated LA so much he just had to leave. <laughs> a lot of things going on. Uh, D, what are your what are your thoughts about him moving across country? I think like he's in search of some sort of like, you know, uh, some sort of meaning in his life. He's <laughs> He's lost. He's definitely lost. Um, he's seeking purpose, and he thinks he's going to find it in Austin. Um, right. I've been to Austin many times. It's a great city. Um, you think you'll find it there, though? Doesn't strike me as a place where you're going to discover anything but barbecue and getting drunk. You could do um, that here. So it sounds yeah. like a good time. Like if he was moving to an uh, ashram in India to meditate or go, <laughs> go, to, go do ayahuasca in Peru, I'd be like, okay. He's right. going to like literally one of the drinking capitals of the world. <laughs> We're not going to drink. <laughs> He's gonna come back in cowboy boots, watch. I'll, I'll put money on it right now. Well, I already have the Texas look. I got the nice hat, the shades. You do, you do look like a, a Facebook Texas employee. <laughs> I do. We're driving the Jeep. Yeah. The four, the four by four. Oh, what, what are you doing with the Tesla? It's just sitting there. All right, no cool. Way. Do you mind if I drive it around a little bit? Sure. Take the slingshot too. <laughs> I'll have three cars well, now. Well, take, take D's Aston. Yeah. <laughs> take it all. <laughs> D, I saw you driving the Aston recently. Yeah. I, we, uh, I drove it the other day with him. I, really? I finally uh, had to, uh, I have to get enough miles so I can get a smog check. <laughs> you should have let me take it to austin i could have got all your miles in i needed 600 miles so i, I it's been a, it's been a struggle to get there <laughs> i'm going a few thousands so i could i could have done that for you <laughs> how hot is it in el paso el paso strikes me as a very warm place el paso it's really hot here so i'm in the car we pulled over to make sure i had good service okay. so we pulled over it's really hot we're in a mini mall we're waiting we just got tacos from that place right there so mm. we're waiting for our tacos to get delivered to our car um what, yeah it's pretty hot what's so the scene there like what's the what corona scene it's funny people are actually taking corona kind of serious here like we got some guys let me see if i flip my camera around these guys over here they have their mask on they're trying to order tacos and mask so actually surprisingly seriously people are taking corona in new mexico i just read that in texas saw the last seven days they saw the highest hospitalization i know my mom sent me that article and she goes, you're, you're chasing the eye of the storm, aren't you? Going from Florida to Texas. <laughs> yeah. I'm going after it. Okay, uh, let's get into the topics right away with D. Um, D, a big thing that happened this week was Clean Monster. We got them on Amazon. I heard yeah. you've been talking with Jeff. You guys have had some parties, some talk. Uh, yeah. Break that down for us. What was that? Yeah, you know, just hanging out with Bezos. What was that like? Well... <laughs> I didn't get the chance to get to talk to Jeff yet, but it took literally two. I've been working on this since the middle of March, this hand sanitizer brand. And uh, I probably tried 50 different hand sanitizers in the last three months. I tried gels, I tried sprays, I tried wipes, I tried everything. This one was super interesting because it's um, all made in the USA. It's peppermint and lavender. So the, one of the things I noticed about hand sanitizer, like Purell, take for example, the, the smell is so harsh yeah. that like, it, like it's, especially yeah. if you're in your car and you don't have your windows down and you put that, it just like, it, it literally suffocates you. Right. So I wanted something that smells good, that is good for your hands because what, what you're realizing is your hand, putting hand sanitizer every single day, your hands are getting drier. So we found, uh, we developed a formula that is, peppermint lavender it's moisturizing it's Ooh. you know it's plant-based uh and we were able to hit a, a reasonable price point so three three pack of four ounce spray for 14.95 we chose the spray because it's just like it's just i don't know it, it's less messier than the gels like when you put gel it literally feels like you've just drenched your hand in like some weird ocean <laughs> poison and yeah. so the spray actually came out great 
especially with sharing with people, it's a lot easier because like you don't have to hand it to somebody and have the perfect amount. You can just spray, spray, spray. Yeah, and 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 people are gonna love it when they when they uh, smell it. It just smells insane. I haven't stopped using it only because mostly because it just smells really good. Yeah, just put uh, it on. and it's now on Amazon. Uh, it'll be uh, it's Amazon today as of last week, and it'll be on Prime in the next two days. Shipping all over the country for two days. Um, cool. You're also what took um what took so long to get going on it? So supply of bottles in America is very very short. So uh, there is no bot. There's like no bottle manufacturers, plastic bo bottle manufacturers in America that have capacity. And then everything out of China is taking forever. So not the manufacturing yeah. time, the boat time. The clearing customs in China, all that stuff. It took us about two months to get the bottles, and it took us uh, only two days to fill them all. And we're ordering wow. large quantities. We're anticipating to sell a lot. And then we had to go through um, the entire process of the label being uh, done right for legal purposes and getting the formula registered with the FDA and all those things right. all just take time. Because we, there are people who are just selling hand sanitizer, but didn't follow any of the rules, the laws, because the FDA gave everyone blanket coverage for the next six months, where you can wow. essentially just, peep, anyone can make hand sanitizer right now. Right. And so, like literally, alcohol uh, distilleries are making hand sanitizer, and they're not following, they're not registering on site, they're not doing any of that stuff. So. But the FDA said, that's fine, we, we have a shortage in this country, we want everyone manufacturing this stuff. So it, we, we took the long route and said, we want to learn and do this exactly right. Because if it actually becomes a big business, we don't want to end up paying for it down the line. Right. Yeah. And do you think you're early to the party, late to the party, in the middle of the time for the party? Like, with, like yeah. it's been a couple of months since all this really started. I think I'm late to the hand sanitizer party. Uh, I branded social good hand sanitizer story. That's where I think there's still opportunity, where mm -hmm. I think we're gonna win is because we're gonna go out there, we're telling a brand story, we're donating a portion of our sales to hashtag lunch bag, which is helping um, feed and uh, homeless people and students in LA. So we're, we're really wrapping it around like a real cause and the brand is fun, the packaging is fun. So I think yep. for that purpose, I think we're fine. And we're also seeing like, the with the reopening everyone's going to be even more careful like no one's probably using hand sanitizer into the same level because they're not leaving their house once you go back to work you're going to have to have a hand sanitizer on your desk. everywhere you're going to yeah. have to have it everywhere you go in your car so i i'm anticipating our hand sanitizer and mask business actually to really pick up with everything reopening yeah and i think those sense. people that got in so early are just going to drop off like what is that going to be because then you would really win in the long run with all these people who got kind of uh, got to go into the radar. So I, I think, I don't think they're going to go away. I think most of those people focused on selling to um, hospitals, uh, businesses like FedEx, UPS, they have drivers, they all need hand sanitizer and wipes. So like, there's a lot of people focusing on that end of the spectrum. Right. We're focusing on direct to consumer and making the best, highest quality product. Right. So we're competing in a different space than the folks that are just trying to put hand sanitizer everywhere. Yeah. Like Makes it. sense. So yeah, you can check it out at Amazon. It's great. I've been using it every day. Um, like you said, it's great. It smells amazing. Uh, the next thing is the marathon. So you, July 4th is the marathon. Uh, the registration for that closed the first of this month. What is that process looking for you like for you? Are you, are you on pace? Is, is your body right? What, Give us a little rundown on the marathon for you. I feel pretty good. I've been running. I pretty much run every, every other day instead of every day to get some rest. It's getting really hot. Like I ran this morning. It was like 98 degrees or whatever it was. How many miles are you doing? I, so yeah. I, do, I do a, a, a Monday, I'll do like a five miler. And then Wednesday, I'll do like three. And then I'll do my long run on Friday. And then just a relaxed run on, on the weekend, like two miles or whatever. So this Friday, I'll run 10 miles. And so wow. once I do 10, I feel good and we'll go from there. Will you actually hit 13 or do you just keep, stay under? No, I'll do 13. Okay. 
Yeah. I mean, that's more like if you're running a full marathon, but right. it's just hot. I actually ran with our friends, Ryan Tierney and Riley uh, on Friday, which was really nice just to even be able to hang out with people and run. And yeah. People do look at you weird though. Three people. And you're in like, yeah, that is pretty weird. Did any of you I've been talking to um. No. What did you say, Pete? Oh. I was talking to Tierney about um because he's kind of doing some stuff in the sanitization game as well. Yeah. And I was helping him with making a Shopify site and these other things. I'm like, what's up with all your stuff? He's like, dude, like all the the riots really messed him up in his warehousing because like they had to shut down, which is pretty uh, crazy. We heard that too from like UPS. Like we were shipping a lot of packages packages and they had to move it from their location in LA because they were scared of getting looted. That's crazy. I don't think any warehouses got touched. You never know if they could, but yeah, I don't think they got hit, but could yeah. you imagine all your inventory in a warehouse getting looted? That'd be the best spot to loot. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, it would be the best, but those things are heavily guarded. They have security. It's not like a UPS warehouse is just, Hey, come on in. That's true. <laughs> Um, also we have, uh, so the new running sucks merch too. I have it on now. Uh, it's great. What, what are you guys doing? So you guys are doing a t-shirt as well for the half marathon people, right? Yeah. Everyone gets a free t-shirt. So we're designing that right now. Ship it out. We got all these brands to give us really cool stuff. Hey, do, hey why doesn't feet give us some socks? Do you want socks? Yeah. I'll give you some socks. Yeah. How Let's many... get everyone some, uh, athletic running socks. Beautiful. We got about 40,000 pairs just sitting in a warehouse. So <laughs> how many do you want? Probably like, I think 400 people signed up. So just give us 400 wow. pairs. Okay. Well, you better start marketing us. Yeah. <laughs> telling everyone we're giving out socks. <laughs> you Put a coupon code for your hoodies in there. Cool. Yeah, let's do that. Let me, I got to approve it with my boss, Parker, but I'm sure he's down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed we get that one through. Uh, yeah yeah but the running sex merch is uh it's pretty sick you've dropped one are we dropping another another yeah, we're, dropping, we're dropping this hat this week and four yeah. other t-shirts uh um coming by you know this kid came by yesterday patrick who actually has a really cool like product where they actually put it in Go the inside it. of your hat yeah where, you, where it helps you from sweating so your, your hat doesn't get ruined oh that's actually genius yeah, I think it's called No Sweat. It makes sense. Yeah. Intuitive name. Yeah. What's it called? What's it called, Pete? No Sweat. No Sweat. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how he came up with that one. What are you yeah, eating? Keep it simple. No. We're, we're like five minutes from Mexico. So we got some rice and we got some tacos. Let's see right here. How's that wall looking over there? You know, literally in Mexico. El Paso, I don't know if anyone's been to El Paso, but like you could, El Paso, you stand there and like you see Mexico. It's like across the street is Mexico. That's amazing. So we were just talking about it. We're like, it's really easy to get past this. Like there's no security or anything. So now I understand why they want to build this wall because like you're, I mean, you're really exposed. Like Mexico's literally this right guy, here across the Taylor, street. So you're supporting build the wall. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm understanding why some people would want to build a wall. This guy. This guy is an all lives matter build the wall guy. That's a bad look. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm all about I'm all about humans. <laughs> Spread love. <laughs> poor guy. Uh, okay, let's move on. Why you gotta call me a poor guy right in front of me? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's bad when Pete's like hitting me, being like poor guy. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Okay, well, well, let's just move on yeah. uh, okay. to greener grass. We had a guest writer today. What happened? Are you are you just checking out? We're just getting guest people to write now. What what's up with the newsletter? <laughs> so he he DM'd me. Um, he's like, "Yo, I got this really interesting story," and I was like, "Shit, that's a really interesting story about Robin Hood traders kind of like manipulating the price of Hertz, and how Carl Icahn sold forty percent of his Hertz stock. Oh, he owned forty percent of the company that he sold at sixty right. cents. Now it's like." A, you know, a couple dollars. It went up like insane. How pissed he must be. And I'm like, damn, this is a really good story. That and he wrote it pretty well. And, and for my first thought was like, okay, I'm gonna rewrite this in my own words and just rip up his story. And then because it's such a good story. And then I was like, ah, that's kind of a dick move. 
<laughs> I should just let him get the credit and write it. Right. So we put it up there and everyone loved it. We got really good feedback. He, in his email to me, he said, I want to be the big cat to your, to your uh, partner or whatever. He wants to write once a week. And I was like, let's start with one. And it was good. People liked it. Um, it was a really good weird one. Weird use of the word simp. I didn't really understand when he kept saying simp. Yeah. Um, I guess that's millennial terms. Yeah. But he's where, a good writer. And um, where, where does he live? We're always looking for writers. I don't know, honestly. I looked him up on LinkedIn. He's like, I have no, I have no idea. Okay. But he wants to write once a week. And we're looking for more writers on the Elro Street Journal. So if anyone's reading this wants to write, we're trying to expand. And I think more voices are fun. We had some good feedback. People are already shitting on me. I thought like people would be taking shots at him, but they're like, he's so much better than you. And he has no typos. And he knows how to use sentence structure. I'm just like, damn, that's how you guys feel. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stick to clothes, Taylor. Apparently writing is not your, uh, not your I can't, can't. To. Well, I didn't know that like, I, I lacked good sentence structure and all these things and all, all the shades started coming out. So he's good. He's, yeah, and he, he seems pretty cool. He is good. I like him. So maybe we'll have him on for another article. Who knows? Let's see if he whips up. I want to bring him on. Um, I want to bring him on a behind closed doors and just kind of talk about like, what's up with him? Like, and who he no is. one knows him. Yeah. yeah. Or we who can keep is. him. We can keep him as kind of a secret. And it's just like, oh, the, the writer Dan that no one knows. We keep him uh, mystery, mystery man Dan. I think it's interesting to know what people are. I, I like where they live and what's their perspective and like who who for sure. Like, like what if he's fourteen years old and he's just like this genius kid that just. Is an incredible writing. <laughs> like, that would be awesome. Robin Hood and what, <laughs> what's happening with the stock market? Yeah. That'd be great. We should definitely bring him on. And next behind closed doors, I'll hit him up. I'm sure he's down. It would yeah. be interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, moving on. Road trip, Taylor. Taylor, you're in Arizona right now. How far? How far is it? No, no, Texas. Texas. We're in El Paso now. Uh, we it's 26 hours total. Got so it. we did like seven hours LA to Tucson. We stayed in Tucson last night, which I would not recommend to anyone. I've ever. been to Tucson a couple of times. Yeah. So I've been to visit friends at University of Arizona. Yeah. Because that's a really cool. But, um, but yeah, we're moving to Austin. But pretty much both of our leases were up. And we were just like, look, we could sign something in LA or we could just go travel. So we are going to Airbnb for a couple of months out here. And who knows, like, what's going to happen? But why not try something new? I know D loves his LA bubble and he'll argue or he'll say he can't go to Texas because he's brown. Yeah. But we'll let you know what people are like in Texas and if there are fellow Indians and if it's okay. There, there are Indians in Austin and Houston and Dallas for sure because I've, I've been to those three places and I've seen Indian people there. <laughs> I think if, you um, mentioned, I mean, if you mentioned that you know D, they'll know. They yeah, have it. yeah they'll, they'll have heard I'll have to refer to him by Guru Deep, his real name. Guru, Guru oh, yeah, Guru Deep. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the other thing is, is um, there are, I have a lot of good friends in Austin. I'll introduce you to some, some, uh, some rich people. Perfect. That's my type. <laughs> I really want to meet uh, Tim Ferriss is in Austin. I'm going to try to hit him up. That's one of my goals, just to go hang out with him. That's, that's He's, uh, easy. Yeah, I know. We've been listening to Four Hour Work Week on the way here, and it just it pretty much resonates with my life. Yeah, I mean, there's no way you're even doing four hours. I was gonna say, <laughs> Taylor's on the one hour work week. <laughs> I work hard. I get a bad rep. Why is that? Why do you think that is? Because I'm so you, chill, you, and I, I like to pretend like I don't work hard just to piss off everyone. Yeah. And make them think I'm not working hard. Yeah, I like that. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Pissed me off for a while until he started working here, and then I realized he actually does work. And then I, then I, <laughs> before that, I was like, "Fuck this guy! This guy doesn't work." I love, I love people thinking just like you don't do shit. Like it's fuck you. You got so lucky. You're so lucky, guy. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, I just got really lucky. I don't really work, and it's just all luck. <laughs> Four hour work week. Four hour. <laughs> exactly. Uh, another big news: uh, Coachella officially canceled. Yeah. Are we is that official official? That's uh, New York Post got a memo from AEG sending it to their employees saying it's canceled. So, I mean, that's not an official public announcement, but it is definitely circulating as the rumor. I mean, that's so sad. 
at this point, if they even were to have it, wouldn't it be completely illegal? Yeah, they, in California, it would definitely not fly. Like, they could do Coachella in Texas or something. So I actually had someone on LinkedIn DM me today, and the subject line was Coachella in Texas. No way. I want to make it happen. Yeah. Which is like, I think there's an opportunity. Like, everyone is so festival hungry right now. Like, this is Fire Festival. It's time for Fire Festival 2.0. Everyone would go. Yeah. I mean, you know we who's all the perfect want a guy to lead it? I think I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just whatever state is okay with the liability. So, like, my guess is like a Florida wouldn't give a shit. Yeah. Like, you, no you, can, go to, you can go to your, your hometown of Tampa, they could do it. It's true. I mean, I would fly to a – Pete, you would go out to a festival right now. Oh, like, yeah. Everyone's just itching for it. Yeah, I would, I, would, I, would be, I would be right front stage. Are you kidding me? I think we get an island that's just, like, off, you know, off the coast, so there's no rules. I know this sounds a lot like Fire Fest, but I was gonna say, an island with no jurisdiction. The same path. Where we, we, exactly. It makes sense. Fire Festival, they're just visionaries. They're before their time. If they waited two years, it would have worked out. Yeah, I agree. It was a lack of infrastructure, too. If you figure out the infrastructure, you could win. It's true. That's the hard part. It's difficult. Um, All right. Any other big plans for the weekend besides Taylor? Continue his drive. D, we doing anything this weekend? Besides running? No, not a damn thing. I have a a, a drive-by baby shower. Sounds so much fun. How does that work? (laughs) Give me the breakdown. You just drive and honk. Yeah. Exactly. Like you, uh, you, if you feel comfortable, you walk into their backyard and hang out. If you distance. don't, you distance. Um, if not, you just, hi, drop off a gift, keep it moving. Would you get them? I don't know. I didn't do any of that stuff. It's all your wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what cool. are you doing this weekend? You going to party? Uh, there's chances of it. I was told there is to be this party being thrown. We'll see. We don't know. There's been no confirmation. Uh, there's always chances. The bars are open. So I'm, I'm back out to bars this weekend. You know, uh, no, Nobu Malibu has been popping, I've heard. Popping. I've, I've really? Had, I've had friends go uh, the last two nights, and they said it was slammed. Well, I'm seeing wow. Daily Mail. Daily Mail is just covering everybody who's leaving there. Yeah. It's it is definitely Nobu Malibu is kicking off. Plus, because it has that outdoor area, so everyone feels probably careful and like feels like that's a safer place to go than a closed restaurant. True. When's your uh, when's your first night going to be back at the Natewood property? Uh, nice guy opens June fifteenth. I don't know. I'm, I want to see next week. I'm gonna watch, and the following week I'll go out to eat. I want to hear what happens in society. I don't need to be the first. <laughs> Well, we've been going out for like probably two months, Pete and I, so we could tell you it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> I, I, I want to see how everyone's health is and then make my make my judgment. Yeah, but you there. can't do it in a week. It's a, it's a two-week incubation sure. period. I know, but I know there was a lot of people walking around the last couple of weeks. Yeah, really close together. Yeah. Almost <laughs> on top of each other. Yes. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm curious to see. I want a full breakdown on what's going on in Texas. Yeah. We'll let you know. We get there. We're about 10 hours out. We get there. We still don't have a place booked at all. So we're going to get there probably tomorrow. We have to find a place to live in for a couple months. And uh, we'll just pull the trigger on Airbnb. Once we get settled, we'll just go around. I heard Austin's pretty open. Um, but Austin's a lot of outdoorsy stuff anyway. It's like hiking yeah. and like swimming. So we'll see what it's like. You know what Austin has that's great? Queso. Great queso. Great really, queso. Jesus said there's great queso in Austin. <laughs> she loves queso, so we'll, we'll be getting some queso. <laughs> <laughs> the queso queen. All right, cool. Um, I guess that wraps it up for us. I, the other day we released um, some documentaries that are actually out right now about uh, racism and black oppression that you can go watch this weekend if you're bored uh, and really want to take more of that, uh, on that education route that we've been talking about with the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I actually watched Just Mercy last night. Really, really great film on Amazon. It's free to yeah. rent right now. Um, and I don't know for how long they're having. I'm going to assume for the foreseeable future. 
They'll keep that free for rent. Um, the 13th, like we talked about before, Netflix, The Death and Life of Marsha P. Johnson, also on Netflix. And Selma is also on Amazon Prime Video, uh, free to rent as well. Okay, great. And you're just, you're stupid if you don't watch those. I'm serious. Like, I think the only people that don't fully support the Black Lives Matter movement aren't educated enough. And right. it's just like, you look like an idiot if you're not educated and you're making opinions when you don't know what you're talking about. So if you want to sound like an idiot, don't watch them and still have your opinions. Right. But if you don't fully support the movement, go watch any of these movies and you'll just be like, wow, I was an idiot for not, because I was making a judgment on something that I didn't fully understand. So make sure you understand the issue before you don't support it. Yeah, and it was crazy watching that movie and seeing how much of that still happens today or how much of that I could still see in today's society. I'm like, this is so fucked that something that they're um, showing happened back in the, you know, the 50s and the 60s, I can see that happening still in 2020, which is absurd. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's a great education piece. Great. Thank you. So get out there, learn something this weekend. We'll yeah. be back on Monday. As always, Costa Bravo cocktails. You know the coast of Jet 10, baby. <laughs> Clean Monster on Amazon. Running Sucks on the MenloHouse.com. Over to yeah. Running Sucks, right? Mm -hmm. That's all we've got. Thank you. Beautiful. All right. See All right. Drive safe, guys. Peace. Thank you. Bye-bye.